This video is sponsored by Squarespace. What's going on guys? Vincent here from the creative dojo.net. Hope you're doing well out there and welcome to the After Effects Quick Tip video. Today's video, we're talking about how to create this kind of inner shadow cutout paper embossed look within After Effects. It's all contained within a single layer for the most part. And we're using some clever techniques and tricks on how to use different channels and effects to kind of drive this whole thing and cut everything out using either a text layer or your own logo or graphics. Let's go ahead and hop right in. So here in my tutorial comp, I just have a plain white solid background. Nothing special. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new text layer for this demonstration. Of course, you can use your own logo, um, but in this particular case, using a text layer is a little bit easier for me in this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and type in my text. I'm gonna call it shadow for now. And I'm gonna go ahead and just center it in the composition real quick. So it's nice and centered, nice thick font. I'm gonna make it white. And so for the first part, I'm gonna go ahead and add a, an effect called solid composite. And what this is gonna do is actually fill in the transparency. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this color to black just so we can kind of see. And I wanna go ahead and turn off my background layer for now, just so we can kind of see the alpha channel a little bit better and make sure that our transparency is toggled on. And so the solid composite effect will actually, you know, just fill in the transparency with a solid color. And so this is not actually necessary for text layers because we have our own alpha and I wanna use the alpha channel to drive this whole thing. Uh, but depending on your logo type, whether it has transparency, whether it has black and white values, whether or not you wanna drive the cutout using the alpha channel or luminous channel, will kind of dictate how you wanna approach this. So I'm knocking out all of my transparency with the solid composite effect right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to shift channels and I'll drag that into our text layer. And this is the effect that's gonna be doing a lot of the cutout per se. So in this particular case, I wanna use the luminance or the white values, the white and black values, and use that data to kind of generate my alpha channel. So I'm gonna change my take alpha from luminance. And now we're basically where we started off from. And like I said, again, um, this is not necessary for this particular text layer, but if you had a logo that had, you know, different values, different color values, you know, you may want to, you know, fill in the transparency and use, you know, just the bright white values to kind of cut out your logo or, or not. Um, and so when you do that, you're going to see that you have kind of like a black fringe around your logo or your text. And this is somewhat normal. I'm going to go ahead and clean that up with a simple choker. And we'll change this to one. So it's just gonna choke it by one pixel. Just kind of clean that little edge up a little bit. And so here is where, you know, you can do a lot of things. Depending on your logo type, you can actually do some inversion, right? And I'll show you more about this in the next little bit, but I'm gonna go ahead and do invert. And instead of inverting the RGB channel, I'm gonna go ahead and invert the alpha. So what I've basically done was I actually created kind of like a cutout of my text and filled everything that's not my text with you know the solid composite, which is black. And so we can change this color to whatever we want here and change it to like red, for example. Um, but it may be easier, depending on what you're doing, to just generate a fill. So add a fill effect in here. We'll change all this to, let's just say a nice little white color like this. And then from here on out, it's pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and add a drop shadow. And we'll do multiple passes here, but I'm gonna add a perspective drop shadow and we're gonna go ahead and create our first shadow here. And so it's kind of like the glow effect where we're trying to emulate kind of like the natural fall off, inverse square law of the fall off of light. Um, and so typically I wanna create kind of like a darker, tighter initial shadow. Um, kind of like this and increase the softness just a little bit. So a very, very hard shadow like this um, and change the opacity down to maybe like nine or so. And then I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And we do the exact same thing, but for this one, it's gonna be a little bit softer, larger shadow. So maybe um, an opacity of seven, a little bit lighter, but we're gonna go ahead and increase the distance a little bit, and then go ahead and increase the softness. And so now we have our cutout with our shadow, and if we enable our background layer, you can kind of see what we have here. And so this is just takes a little bit of fine tuning. So again, like I said, I wanna make the first shadow kind of tight and kind of opaque, so. Get a really nice edge just like that. Don't make it too, you know, too soft for the initial one. And then the second one, the drop shadow here, we'll go ahead and make it just a little bit softer. And a little bit larger as well. Just to create a really nice subtle fall off. If you wanted to be extra, you can go ahead and create, you know, a third or fourth drop shadow, kind of blend it in a little bit more naturally. 
um, this way. But you kind of get the general idea. And to add just a little bit more depth, I'm going to add a bevel alpha. Now you have to be careful with this effect because you know if you're not using a white background, it will actually kind of add a, a noticeable bevel on the top right here and on the bottom right here. And so you will actually see that if you use a different color. In that particular case, you may need to scale things up and kind of hide it or mask it. But by adding a little bevel alpha, you can see it create a nice little bevel right here. And I want to make it 180 degrees um, opposite of the angle that I have. So negative 45 degrees. We'll make it nice and accurate. And of course, you can change the thickness to whatever you want. I just want to add a subtle thickness, maybe like 1.2, and then maybe decrease the light intensity to like 0.25 or so. Just so we have a very nice subtle bevel, just add a little bit of depth to our scene. And just like that, you've created a nice kind of cut out shadow look. And this is very popular for transition shapes and all that stuff, logo animations and stuff. And it's all contained within a single layer, which is pretty awesome. Um, so if I hop it over to my logo demonstration here, um, this is where I can kind of show you why certain things don't work or certain methods may not work exactly depending on your logo type. So for example, in this demonstration, I actually, you know, created a, my logo comp separately. So I pre-composed my logo into a separate composition and brought that in. Now, like I was saying, depending on your logo type, you may have alpha within your logo, like little cutouts right here, or you may have black and white values in your logo. It really depends on kind of how you want to cut things out. Um, but in this particular case, um, it's a little bit different. So I actually added a solid composite, made everything red. So I filled in the transparency with red. And then I used the shift channels to kind of cut everything out uh, that's red. So I set the alpha, instead of um, luminance, I set it to red. Um, so we have something like this. I clean the edges up with a simple choker. And in this particular case, I did not invert it. I did not actually go ahead and invert this whole thing. I actually wanted to keep it just like this and then fill it in with white and then add a drop shadow that way. And then of course our bevel alpha and then turn on our background layer. So by doing that, you get a simple little cutout like this. And you know, this is kind of what I was going for. Now, if you didn't add a solid composite, you, you would get something like this, which is kind of like the opposite of what I wanted. Um, this is more of an embossed extrusion look right here. Uh, but you know, let's say we did invert it, right? We get something like this as well. So, you know, by playing around with the different channels and inverting different channels and, you know, selecting, you know, how you want to cut things out, you can get different looks depending on, you know, what your logo is like. So, you know, whenever you're, you know, doing this, you got to think about, you know, what exactly are you trying to achieve? You know, what are you trying to cut out and how do you isolate that using the shift channels and invert and, you know, change the alpha or invert the luminance or, you know, it kind of depends on your logo type. So just kind of play around with it. You can get different looks using this technique. Before I go, I want to give a quick thanks to our sponsors over at Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is the only platform to create an amazing website, whether it's for your store, online business, or portfolio. They have amazing things to choose from, fully customizable so you can make it the way you want it to look like without having any code knowledge required. They have awesome 24-hour support, and best of all, if you use the promo code DOJO at checkout, you have to save 10% off your order and support the DOJO, so check it out over at squarespace.com slash DOJO. Squarespace, the moment place to create an amazing website. So that's pretty much it guys, this is a very simple technique, use it in your transitions, your graphics, your motion design, your titles, your logo animations, just have fun with it, it's very easy to do, play around with it, and experiment. If you guys like videos like this, give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment down below for the YouTube algorithm, and subscribe and hit the bell icon to stay notified. My name is Vincent Wynn from The Creative Dojo, I'll see you guys next time, bye guys.